I explained that you would need to estimate the percentages of minerals in your plutonic rocks in order to be able to name them. And I showed you these images that show um, a single mineral in a, in a rock and the corresponding percentages for um, what you're seeing down the, the microscope. That's what these circles represent. You can extrapolate this to looking at a hand sample of a, a rock too. But I wanted you to see um, correct percentages because your eye tends to overestimate the percentage of dark minerals. Let's try to do this with a real rock. And here's um, a, a rock that you may decide looks like a granite but it has to have the right um, percentage of the appropriate minerals uh, before you can name it correctly. So let's just look and see what we, what we see in the rock. Uh, I'm looking at what appears to be a bunch of case bar that in the pink mineral. I also see plagioclase. Uh, a more white, blocky mineral in the rock. I see hornblende. I see quartz, the grayish, glassy looking mineral in here. And I see what is also probably biotite crystals, these slender crystals. We're seeing the edge of the sheet of mica. It's a little bit hard to say just looking at this image, but there's a guess for now. All right, let's assign some percentages to those different phases in this rock. How much plagioclase do you think is there? I wanna say that it's probably close to 15%. If you look at 15% uh, for the, the guideline image, eh, it's something like that. It's a little bit hard to say because of um, all the pink coloring of the case bar. How much case bar then? It's significantly more, I'd say. There's a lot of pink in that image. So for now, let's go with 40% or so. It might be a little less, but we're just approximating right now. Uh, let's estimate quartz. Now quartz should look to your eye in this image as the, like the shiny, glassy, gray, not white mineral. And I'd say that that's probably around 30%. Uh, onto Hornblende, there's quite a bit, but it's nowhere near as much as the plagioclase, I don't think. So let's say 10%. I don't have an image right here for you to estimate that, but it looks less than 15% to me. And biotite, it's hard to say. Let's, it's, has to be less than Hornblende, uh, let's go with 5%. Then those numbers actually end up adding up to 100%, which is nice because we need it to add up to 100% to describe the entire rock. Okay, to name the rock, we'll need to decide which IUGS diagram to use. And I showed you three different IUGS diagrams to name plutonic rocks the QAP diagram that is for felsic and intermediate rocks. I showed you another diagram for more gabroic rocks or mafic rocks that has the, the key components of plagioclase, pyroxene, and olivine. And I showed you a diagram for ultramafic rocks that has olivine, orthopyroxene, and cliopyroxene as key components. First, you can assess what the color index of your rock is. In the rock that we just looked at, we estimated about 15% dark minerals, the hornblende and the biotite. That's not very much. It's a relatively low color index and puts us in ballpark in a felsic or intermediate rock type. Um, you need to consider what minerals you see in the rock. We saw quartz, plagioclase, case bar, hornblende, and biotite. Um, that seems to indicate the QAP diagram for felsic intermediate rocks. 
And which minerals are most abundant? Well, in that rock, it was quartz, plagioclase, and case bar. So it's really appropriate to use the QAP diagram here and not the one for uh, mafic and ultramafic rocks. Now, what we had is um, the percentages that we estimate were quartz, 30%, plage, 15%, case bar, 40%. 10% hornblende, 5% biotite. Now we decided what was appropriate is to use the quartz alkali feldspar plagioclase diagram, diagram, the QAP diagram. And so we ignore anything that's not quartz, plagioclase, or case bar in order to name the rock. What that leaves us with is 30% quartz. Uh, a stands for alkali feldspar. We had 40% alkali feldspar. And plage, we had 15%. That adds up to 85% total. And that's a problem because if we plot, try to plot those numbers not adding up to 100, then the three lines won't intersect and we won't um, converge on a single point and be able to name the rock. So we have to normalize. And to do that, um, we need to multiply by some factor to make those percentages add up to 100%. So we'll take 100, divide that by 85 to get 1.18. That's the factor that we need to multiply th those values by in order to get those totals to add up to 100. So the normalized values, I'll do the math for you, the normalized values are quartz is 35%, alkali feldspar is 47%, and plagioclase is uh, 18%. And that now adds up to 100. So those are the values that we'll need to use uh, in order to um, in order to uh, um, plot on the ternary plot, and then subsequently name it using the IUGS diagram. All right. Um, the QAP diagram has quartz at the top corner, alkali feldspar at the uh, bottom left corner, and plagioclase, conveniently, right at the bottom right-hand corner, right there. Remember, each of those corners represents 100% of a given mineral. So if we're trying to plot 35% quartz, 0% quartz is down on that line. We'll want to count 0, 10, 20, 30, 5, about halfway there. So 10, 20, 35% quartz is somewhere in there. We want 47% alkali feldspar. So remember, this, this line over here is 0% alkali feldspar. We'll count 10, 20, 30, 47, somewhere in there. We'll draw 47 right about there. And plagioclase, we have about 18%. So this line here represents 0% plagioclase. We'll count 10 and then 18 right about there. They intersect at a single point, and uh, that intersection point is the point on the IUGS diagram that we're going to use to be able to name the rock. So we can use the percentages of quartz, alkali, feldspar, and plagioclase to plot uh, directly on the IUGS diagram or to visually estimate. Uh, the percentages of, let's see, 30% quartz, about there, 35% quartz, excuse me, 47% um, alkali feldspar, it's about like this, and 18% plagioclase, should be just about like that. So, indeed, in the end, our rock plotted in the granite field, and so those percentages that we estimated for that rock do indeed end up with the name granite. 
now you should be able to apply this method to naming any plutonic rock as long as you consider what minerals you see in the rock, which minerals are most abundant, what's the color index of your rock to give you an idea of whether it's felsic or maybe intermediate, mafic or ultramafic. You need to consider all those things and go through that process in order to know which IUGS diagram you use. So if you're looking at a very dark rock that has a lot of pyroxene, but not very much quartz or feldspar that you can see, you shouldn't be defaulting to the QAP diagram. So you need to go through that thought process and um, consider which uh, diagram is appropriate to name your plutonic rock.